What an amazing day this has been. On this past Sunday, I had a private conversation with the president, President Joseph Biden, and he said to me that he was going to be dispatching members of his staff, senior members of his staff to Selma to actually begin the process of strengthening the relationship between the federal government and Selma. Actually, I thought he was mentioned, I thought he, when he said that, that he was suggesting that that would happen in about a week or so, at least two weeks. But little did I know he was actually talking about in three days. And so today, we had the privilege of meeting with members, senior staff members of the president. And it has been an amazing time here in Selma. A tremendous amount of work has taken place. The foundation is laid. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking today. Uh, you've heard me before uh, talk about the different challenges and the opportunities we have before us. But I would like to release the mic to probate judge uh, Jimmy Nunn, who's going to speak on behalf of the county. Thank you. Judge. Let me say uh, good evening, everyone. And thank everybody for coming out. And uh, I will be very brief also. Um, we had a, This is a great day in Selma, Dallas County, uh, where all of the agencies have come together and they have landed here in Selma, Alabama, and they have provided us with many, many resources and services. And I truly believe that they are a man to their word and that they're going to do what they said they're going to do. And I trust that they will do what they said they're going to do. And um, I know, Mitch, I know you said that it's, it's teamwork, it's working together uh, from the bottom up and middle out. Uh, but he also said we must get together and work and, and be as one. We must unify Dallas County, City of Selma, in order for us to proceed. It doesn't matter how many agencies come in, we have got to be on one accord. And that really means a lot. It gives us hope. It gives us some type of direction that if we're not together, we need to get together. But I really do want to thank them for landing here. I want to thank President Biden uh, for coming and lending his assistance and his resources that he have, that he's lending it here in Selma, Dallas County, Alabama. And you can't ask for more than that. He came, I mean, we had a room, uh, 100 people probably in that first meeting. You can't ask uh, federal agencies, state agencies, local agencies. All of them are here, and they lending us. Now, if hey, if 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 we don't hunt that dog, it's our fault. Yeah, so we must do what we need to do. So I just want to thank y'all for being here, and uh, Miss Melinda Williams uh, from Congresswoman Sewell's office. Thank you, Mayor. I'm a little vertically challenged. I represent Congresswoman Terry Sewell, who proudly serves the 7th Congressional District, her hometown of Selma, Alabama. And she thanks the administration for sending his senior advisor and the infrastructure coordinator, Mayor Mitch Landrieu, to Selma today, along with our agency partners, SBA, FEMA, EDA, USDA. We are glad to have you. But we also have the Corps of Engineers here. We were all in one room, one place for one mission, and that's to build Selma back. And the directive that Mitch has, excuse me, Mayor Mitch has given all of us, every agency, get it done and follow the law. We're gonna do what's right, we're gonna do it with integrity, and we're gonna do it according to what the President of this United States has given to us. So without any additional words, I'm going to pitch it to the senior advisor and the infrastructure coordinator for the White House, Mayor Mitch Landrieu. Thank, thank you so very much. And thank, please thank Congresswoman Sewell for her incredible leadership. Mr. Mayor, our leaders, all the folks that are representing the United States of America, the state of Alabama, uh, and of course, all of those folks along the Black Belt. 
as I stand here, I can't help but shudder just a bit in the shadow of this bridge that plays such an important role in who we were as Americans and who we want to become. I was here on Sunday with the president. It was a beautiful day. But before he got here, I took it upon myself to walk across this bridge by myself, trying to imagine what it was like when John Lewis, who was just 23 years old, a little boy with a brown coat on and a backpack, was leading a group of courageous American citizens trying to do something really simple, just claim a right, an inalienable right for freedom. And they knew when they crossed that bridge, they would face evil. They would face strange fruit from a poisonous tree. And they were gonna have to confront evil. They were speaking truth to power, yeah, yeah. but they were trying to speak truth in love. Yeah, yeah. And I put my hand on the ground because I wanted to feel what it felt like. Maybe kind of think about what that tear gas yeah. smelled like. Maybe yeah. the hooves of the horses starting to move and the yeah. anxiety and the fear that coursed through their bodies and tried to channel the courage that it took for all of those individuals to think about what was necessary in order for the country to be free again. Yeah. And I want y'all to think about this. John Lewis knew he was going to get hit, and he never moved until he got hit. And they moved him, and he took that pain, along with all the other folks that were with him, on that day became Bloody Sunday. So as I stand here on this sacred spot, I remember my friend John Lewis. I knew John Lewis. John Lewis was a mentor of mine. I loved him very, very much, and I pray that every day that I walk in his steps and have the courage that he has and hope that that courage courses through our veins as we begin to build Selma back, not the way it was, but the way it should have been had we gotten it right the first time. That's what the president said when he was here Sunday. It was nice to come and commemorate. It's important to remember. It's important to remember our whole history, not just the history that we want to remember, but the history that we should remember. Why not to make ourselves feel bad so that we can march to that more perfect union? But if we don't know where we came from, we don't know where we're going. We're right on target, bro. So as it says, we're not going to let anybody turn us around. Pastor, I went by your church, the church that John Lewis and everybody alighted from on that incredible day. And so when President Biden came here, he heard the cry of the people of Selma. He heard everybody say, Mr. President, it's nice to come back here, but what about every day? What is Selma going to be? How is Selma going to get to be what we all know that she could be? And he said, I'm going to make a promise here. I'm going to send my team back down here. The president made a promise. Today, the president kept that promise. He sent me, senior advisor. He sent Kate, Caitlin Durkovich, the head of the national, one of the members of the National Security Council. He sent a member of every one of the federal agencies, from HUD to EPA, right to the USDA, to FEMA, to the Corps of Engineers that are going to shore up to make sure this bridge does not fall into the Alabama River. He, he sent the federal government down to build relationships with Governor Ivey, whose team yeah. was there, yeah. build relationships with the two senators who had That's representatives that were there, major. build relationships major. with the mayor and the county executives who were there, major. build relationships with the faith-based community who was there, the philanthropic community who was there. You know what that's called? That's called the One America. That's called the One Team, <laughs> One Voice, One Fight America, oh, where we sing it off the same page of the same hymn book, right, of the same song in the same church on Sunday all at one time. And when you do that, there is nothing that can stop you from becoming what it is that you want to be. But this is the message I delivered, and I was preaching just a little bit. It don't matter if the president shows up, it don't matter if the governor shows up, if the community is not together, if there is not complete and total communion where everybody's pulling in the same direction, as you said, that dog don't hunt. So we need to find a dog that does hunt. And it is in the hands of the people on the ground from the bottom up and the middle out to build the America that the president says is right within our fingertips right. to You're find right. and right. to build that more right. perfect union. That's what that's about. We know we're not gonna get there, but we can't get there if we don't try. Yeah. We can't get there if we're not heading in the right direction. Yeah. We can't get there if we let people turn us around. We know what the truth is. Yeah. And we're gonna speak truth to power, but we're gonna speak it in love. Yeah. And we're gonna make it happen yeah. because we got the tools, 
we got the resources, but more importantly, the soul of the people, the soul of the people of Selma are going to set the course for reuniting this nation so that the United States of America be that country we always dreamed to be. We're going to be here. The president has delivered on everything that was due because of the hurricane and because of the tornado, I mean, forgive me. And the president says we're going to be here until the end. So I just said what the president said. Let's get it done and let's finish the job. God bless you all. Thank you all so much for having me. Mr. Mayor. I'm going to put someone on the spot right now. I won't ask him to say something, but I want him to come forward. And that's Jay. I want you to come on up, Jay. Come on up. Uh, and the reason I'm asking Jay to come up is because this is the face of our long-term uh, recovery committee. Uh, and I want the people to know that we truly are together. So, Jay, why don't you just make a statement? I think you said it best. The people can't do it here now in partnership with each one of you, then it's not going to be successful. So, Mayor, I'm looking forward to working with you and each one of you folks in this podium, as well as each member of the community, to make this thing not only a recovery effort, but a restoration effort for our community. So, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Folks, it's, it's like this. Uh, Congresswoman Sewell said something the other day that stuck with me. She said, the president sees us. The president hears us. And the president is demonstrating by his action that he feels us. It's now our responsibility to do this work. And so I want to thank everyone who attended on very short notice. I want to thank again the president and you, Mr. Mayor. Once a mayor, always a mayor. I want to thank you, and I want to thank the entire delegation of people from Washington. I want to thank our Congresswoman Sewell. I want to thank her. I also want to acknowledge and, and thank uh, Senator uh, Britt and Senator Tubbleville. They both had representatives in the meeting today. This is a unified effort vertically in our governmental structure, local, county, state, and federal, we are together. And so thank you very much. Thank you. This ends our press uh, conference at this time. I don't know if you have any questions. We'll take three. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, you've mentioned before, and I know most people have mentioned before about building Selma back better. So what does that look like for you as far as infrastructure-wise goes? Well, it means, that, it, it means that those people who are displaced now, we need to be swifter in our response. Uh, this is something that we've talked about. We know we need multifamily housing right now. Selma had a housing crisis before this occurred. Over 5,000 people drive into Selma every day to work, but did not have a place to live. That's building Selma back better. When we provide better housing, when we provide uh, a livable wage to our employees, when we do those things that are necessary to improve the quality of lives for the people in our community. Do you, did you get the certification from FEMA federally for people to be able to sign off on allowing public entities to, to move, to remove uh, the, the uh, debris? Yeah, the personal property, uh, private property debris removal uh, application has been submitted. It is going through the verification channels right now. And uh, I'm expecting that we'll have it finished before this this week and hopefully approved. You've mentioned on your speech on Saturday that, you know, Selma can't grow without the infrastructure to support it. So do you believe that once Selma has completely restored from this tornado that it will see growth? It will see a lot more people coming, moving in and staying in Selma? I am so glad you asked that question because this is something that I did not get a chance to talk about. And that's the need for Selma to be included in the highway infrastructure of this nation. If you look at the highway structure of this nation and you look at this region, you see I-85 coming to Montgomery and stopping. You see I-65 going north and south of the Black Belt. 
You see I-59 coming from west to east, stopping at the Mississippi state line. You see I-20 moving up and down beside our state. When you look at the infrastructure of the highway system alone in this nation and in this region, this region, Selma, Alabama, has been systematically excluded. That's building back better. That's doing what we need to actually build up our community to get us where we need to go. That is a message we want Washington to understand. That's a message we want Montgomery to understand. And that's something that I think this entire region should embrace because 85% of economic development in this nation takes place within five miles of an interstate exchange. We have been systematically excluded. It has been a punishment to our community and it's time for the punishment to end. Thank you.